good evening each and everyone who is present here as well as on youtube i hope i am audible if i am audible uh, please type y in the chat box let me check uh, your enthusiasm on this cloud computing and devops training program please give me just uh, yeah type y yes 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 yadav type y in the chat box yes adarsh kumar sneha tazne kartik konar welcome welcome to the uh, exciting training program on cloud computing and devops yes my dear students please type y in the chat box yes sharvari kamble welcome to the session gautami yes i can see your enthusiasm yes 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 rutuja snehal welcome to the uh, this exciting training program yes all of you please type y in the chat box so that i can check that you are there dukshisham pratik yes zuveria sanjot atharva uday welcome welcome yes guys please type y in the chat box nilesh kamble yes there are others just type y in the chat box yeah and again i uh, would like to request to all of you please share the zoom link as well as youtube link to your uh, friends so that they can also join the session yes sherwari kamble yes yes each and every questions uh, we will answer it shortly yes pranith yes we are crossing 250 Naresh welcome welcome to the training program we are crossing 250 we will start in few uh, minutes amar could you please uh, post our zoom link in the chat box so that others can also join immediately okay yeah sure yeah so once it is uh, uh, my dear students once it is full uh then probably you will be you have to switch to the uh youtube live so before uh, uh we will go for the full capacity of this zoom just join in fast yes we are reaching to 300 now don't stop your why in the chat box yeah we have just crossed 300 now yes yes we are uh, yeah uh, swara swarali vaidya welcome to the training program yes we will be sharing this youtube link in the uh, chat box also but those who are uh, getting opportunity to get into the zoom they are requested to just click on this zoom link and just get into it, uh, get into the training program yes shri raj welcome to the program pratiksha raut yeah yeah prakash mahara welcome to the training program welcome welcome each and every one yeah i can see your enthusiasm you know that uh, data is the future so the cloud is the next future uh, next uh, future so this will be a very exciting program guys so join in
fast. Yes, we are heading to 350. Okay, I'm waiting for 500 so that we can start the session. Yeah, very good evening, uh, Balram. Yes, I can see your enthusiasm. I can see your uh, learning spirit. Yeah, good evening, Trisha. Yeah, we have just crossed 350 now. Hurry up, guys, hurry up. So we can uh, start the session on time. Yeah, hi, hi. Yes, Pawan Kumar, good evening. Yes, hello, Dheeraj. Welcome to the training program. Yeah, good evening, Amulya. Very good evening. Welcome to the program. Yes, we are heading to 400 now. Just type Y, guys, so that I can acknowledge your enthusiasm. Yeah, good evening, Devashis. Am I audible? Somebody uh, uh, is uh, posting in the chat box that uh, he can't hear me. Am I audible, guys? Uh, you're loud and clear. Thank you for it. Yeah, Adarsh, welcome. Yeah, welcome. Welcome, Dheeraj. Yeah, good evening, Lingya. Good evening, Uday. Yeah, Chaitanya. Umme Aya. Ayman. Very good evening. Yes, good evening, Anjali. Yes, we have just crossed 400 now. We are heading to 500. Once we, we reach to the 500, we will start the session. Yeah, somebody are raising their hands instead of uh, typing Y in the chat box. Anyways, I welcoming you all. Yeah, yes, Rutuja, welcome to the program. Welcome, welcome. Welcome each and everyone. Yeah, hi, Ananya. Good evening, Gangadhar, Anusha. Great, great, great. Yeah, good evening, Bhumika. I can see your learning spirit. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining this program. And I uh, assure you, this program will be very fruitful for your academic journey. Yes, we are crossing 430. Yeah, please ask your uh, friends to join the session at the earliest so that uh, they will not miss anything from day one. All right, all right, all right. We are heading to 450. Yeah, good evening, Shravan. Yes, crossed 450 now. Good evening, Shobha. Welcome, welcome to this training program. Yes, we have crossed 460. Good evening, Shubham. Welcome, welcome to this training program. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Shobha, thank you. Yeah, good evening, Ranganath. Good evening, Namrata. Yes, now we are heading to 500. So guys, uh, yeah, good evening. Kailarasi. Good evening, yes. Good evening, Selvi. Uh, can you please check your mic uh, once again? Uh, what H-I-T-H. Can you please check your audio? 
from your end because everybody is uh, everybody can listen to me yeah very good evening some uh, some uh, i mean somebody from admin yeah very good evening yeah good evening shubham yes we are at 475 now that's great good evening harsha that's great that's great that's great okay guys it's so uh, it's a uh, 710 so let's get started once again a uh, very warm good, good evening to each ev who is present uh, in this zoom uh, session as well as on youtube live i am irfan uh, from everyday learning mou division and uh, it's an honor to uh, address you today about xlr so before that uh, before i uh, i dive into uh, the xlr introduction i mean who who we are and uh, uh, what our uh, uh, journey uh, is all about so let me share my screen first yeah good evening sweet smriti yeah please confirm me whether my screen is visible to you or not of course you can confirm in the chat box by typing y yes 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 great 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 so everybody can see my screen yes so uh, let's get started let me introduce you about uh, xlr first so xlr uh, a pioneering company in the training and consulting space uh, throughout the years since 2014 uh, we have extended our reach globally uh, providing high quality classroom as well as online training to the students and professionals our headquarter is in uh, usa houston along with our strong presence in uh, malaysia and uh, some part of uh, middle east and we have very strong footprint in india we are physically operating from six location in india our headquarter is in bangalore karnataka we are also operating from uh, hyderabad telangana we are operating from maharashtra from maharashtra from two locations pune and mumbai and recently we are operating from chennai tamil nadu this display, uh, this uh, reflects our commitment to uh, transcending geographical boundaries uh, making a top notch education accessible to all uh, the expertise of our passionate team spans various domains such as data science artificial intelligence internet of things cloud computing machine learning data analytics so on and so forth at xlr we uphold a commitment to excellence in all aspects from the quality of our training programs to the support we offer to our students whether you are uh, a student looking to enhance your skill or you may be a working professional aiming to advance or upskill in your career we have tailored training programs for you so for this uh, i mean for exploring more so you can visit our website that is www.xlr.com and you can also follow us on various social media platforms like facebook linkedin twitter instagram and youtube as well moving on let's delve into a uh, significance of uh, industry partnerships so uh, you can see on your screen uh, some of the industries it industries we have mentioned here xlr is uh, 
of uh, very fortunate to collaborate with the industry leaders uh, like you can see on the screen but uh, very few we have mentioned here basically we have been associated and collaborated with uh, 450 plus uh, it industries ensuring we uh, stay at the forefront of uh, technological developments uh, these partnerships not only grant us access to the valuable resources but uh, but also foster uh, the association and uh, co-creation uh, enabling us to provide the innovative solutions similarly you can see on your screen our academic partnerships and uh, uh, this is not uh, the end uh, my dear participants i'm very happy to share with you that uh, we have been collaborated with 1070 plus higher education institutes in pan india rather outside of india also recently we have been collaborated with one of the uh, premium university kaf university in south africa so we are extending our reach globally uh, i mean uh, you can see on your screen some of the giant uh, uh, academic uh, organizations we have mentioned here so these association or uh, collaboration keep us at the forefront of the innovation offering students and uh, faculties access to the leading minds and resources these academic partnerships also create a sense of community fostering an environment of uh, learning and growth now let me introduce you about our edl everyday learning a program which is close to your hearts edl offers free application oriented training sessions on trending technologies led by industry experts so these sessions aim to provide relevant training hands on experience and assist colleges in meeting the accreditation standards such as nac and nb so here i would like to request all of you for this non commercial mou collaboration you can reach out to xlr at edl at the rate xlr.com so that your college also get connected with xlr through this non commercial association and you can benefit all our programs for free of cost so i would like to request amar please post our edl email id with a phone number so that our students can reach out to us for further communication uh, yes i posted the contact details thank you amar so our training programs for students and faculties conducted by industry experts focus on uh, delivering valuable insights and uh, practical skills through hands on training we ensure interactive sessions uh, with the assignments and uh, uh, learning materials and this in some of the training programs through our learning management system so we have very beautiful learning management system here you can see so uh, shortly amar will explain you how to register for this lms access basically this lms access is a lifetime lms access which will be free free of cost yes free of cost so that through this lms you can attend the live session you can watch the previous recording and at the same time you can mark your attendance so shortly my uh, colleague amar who will explain you how to uh, use this lms moving further as i said that your college will be getting the complete bundle under this non commercial mou collaboration like industry mous i mean your college can fill the gap between the industry campus and college campus then uh, through this uh, non commercial mou collaborations your college will be getting 
uh, the industry webinars, industry FDPs, and uh, you will be getting the assignments and assessment projects and internship uh, placement uh, uh, preparation programs like CRT programs. So everything will be free under this non-commercial collaboration. So without wasting much time, let me uh, come to the conclusion that uh, Excelar is not just a training and uh, consulting company. It is a partner in your educational and professional journey. So reach out to us for this uh, non-commercial MOU collaboration. That's what I'm, uh, I mean, uh, this is my uh, the final note on this. And uh, thank you for your time. And uh, I look forward to your active participation in this training program that is cloud computing and DevOps. Thank you. Thank you all. Over to you, Amar. Yeah, sure. Thank you so much for such a wonderful introduction. So dear participants, very good evening and warm welcome to the XLR 30 hours training program on cloud computing and DevOps. So before starting the LMS KT, I would like to know that I hope I'm loud and clear. If yes, please confirm in the chat box, both YouTube and Zoom participants. I'm waiting for your reply. Okay, good. Yes. So guys, to get the LMS access, the import, important thing is that to get to do a registration. Okay. Because if you're not able to do your registration, you're not going to get the LMS access. Okay. I hope lots of you are already done with your registration, but few of participants are still not done with the registration. So I'm sharing the registration link in the chat box. So you can go ahead and you can mark your registration. I shared over Zoom and YouTube as well. Okay. Don't worry about the attendance. I will cover each and everything. Okay. Within five to 10 minutes. So let me share my screen. Guys, be active. Once I share the screen, four per papers, you can quickly give me the replay. Is this visible or not? Yes. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, now focus on the AKT. So guys, LMS is nothing but learning management system and it's XLR online portal. And what is the use of LMS? LMS, by using the LMS, we are going to provide you the recorded sessions, material. You have to mark the attendance, then assignment, then assessment. All things you will get over the LMS and that will be with you for lifetime. Okay. Now, I will show you the way to access the LMS. So first of all, once you are done with your registration, you receive two email. Okay. So first email is that welcome to XLR and verify your account. If you are a first time user of XLR solution, you receive one email. And if you are second time user of XLR solution, second time user means you already attended any course from XLR. You are a second time user. Okay. So in the first email, you have to set your password. So we mentioned the verification link. Simply click on this link. It will take you to the next page. Set my password. Here you have to mention your password. Whatever you whatever password you want on your own, you can type it here. Confirm your password. Set my password. Okay. Once you are successfully set your password, open the second email. And here we already shared that classroom access. Welcome to the cloud computing and DevOps course invitation email in that we mention our LMS URL. Okay. Online learning .com. It's our LMS URL to do a sign in simply click on this link. It will replace you. See now going forward in the future, if you forget that, uh, if you are not able to get your emails. Okay. So simply go on any web browser, type it down online learning.xlar.com. Click on sign in, give your credential. That's it. You are able to access the recordings. Okay, so here you have to click on sign in and then it will reflect you to the login to the XLR page. Why? Once you click on the link, it will take you through the login to the XLR page. Here, what you have to mention? So the email ID 
which you use at the time of registration and the password which you have set in the first email. Click on login. That's it. This is the step to set your password and do a login. Once I click on the login, now I will show you the live elements, how it is to work. So let me reshare my screen. Just uh, give me a couple of seconds. Same thing. Once my LMS home tab is visible, confirm me in the chat box. It is visible. Yes, good. Thank you so much, Gaurav. And now first way, how to join the session. So there are two ways to join the session. First way, join via Zoom. Second way, join via YouTube. So at right hand side of your home tab, see guys, I'm on home tab. <coughs> Sorry. So I'm on a home tab in the right hand side of the home tab. You are able to see the today's session tab in that. If you scroll down a little bit, see cloud computing and DevOps EDL day one, and you are able to see the join button every day. If you come here at 650, you are able to see the join button. If you click on that, it will take you through the zoom simplest way. If our capacity is rich or is you have any problem with the zoom, no need to worry. We are live on YouTube as well. Scroll up above the today session tab. Get one minute. Above the today session tab, you are able to see one banner. Okay. And the banner is cloud computing and DevOps. Okay. If you click here, it will take you through the YouTube live. Whatever happening okay. here, it will be live here. If you have any query or question, you can type it down in the chat box, attendance link, and important information from the trainer and important information from the x Latin. We'll share each and every information here. Okay. Coming back to the home tab. Now I will show you how to access the recordings. Okay. Now left hand side of the LMS on home tab, you are able to see the country learning. So we scroll down. Don't worry about the uh, other classroom as I have access to all. So we'll focus on cloud computing and DevOps. Yes, here, here you are able to see cloud computing and DevOps. Okay. So on this classroom, you can click anywhere. Now in curriculum tab, there are three sub tabs, feedback response, session recordings and material. Okay. Now we'll go to the feedback response here. You have to click. Click on submit your attendance and feedback here. Okay. So guys, why feedback is important? We are getting to know that. Okay. We are getting to know that how the sessions are going on. Your words is available for you. Okay. And most important thing, 60% attendance is mandatory to get the certificate of participation. So please make sure that you are marking your attendance on a daily basis. I will repeat once again, 60% attendance is mandatory to get the certificate. So please mark your attendance on daily basis. And one more thing, the attendance link will only open between 8.30 PM to 9.30 PM. So you have to make sure that you are marking your attendance at that time. Okay. If you came here at 9.31, you are not able to fill the form, but don't worry. Now, if your participant will ask me, sir, I just, uh, I just registered. What about today's attendance? So don't worry. I am there. I will share the attendance link at 8.30. But don't start asking me from 8 o'clock. Sharp 8.30, I will share the link. Okay, don't worry about that. Now coming by one step back, below the feedback response tab, we have session recordings. Okay, session recordings. See, day one introduction to cloud computing. Okay, click on that. Click on play button. You are able to join the session from here as well. And this recording will be with you for lifetime. Okay. You can access anytime. Huh? So now day one recording is there. If tomorrow we'll done with the day two, we'll upload the recording there. Day one, day two, up to day 15, all the recordings will be there. Okay. So now below the session recording tab, we have material tab. See today, if trainer is going to take this material, Trainer will share with us, will upload over here and you have access of that. See, day one, what we are going to cover, we uploaded here. You can access from the LMS, cloud introduction, demo, GCP. We uploaded each and everything. Okay. So this is the way to sign into the LMS and access feedback, recording sessions and material. Now, one more thing, few of the participants have LMS access for in another classroom, but on their dashboard, 
at cloud computing classroom are not able to see so go in the store search for that classroom see uh, cloud computing and devops click on that and here enroll now after that you have to proceed done congrats your order has been successfully placed if you come back on home tab and if you search for that classroom that classroom will be there okay i hope i'm clear if you have any query or question let me know if there is no any query or question let me confirm if it's clear then please confirm in the chat box clear 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 wonderful you to participant it is clear okay good okay 99 percent of the students are clear with that so thank you so much guys and without investing that much time in the lms we we'll start with the session so bala yes please take it forward thanks amar for your time okay so hello everyone a uh, wonderful good afternoon this is bala and uh, i will be the trainer for this edl program okay so having a quick introduction of about myself i do have a 10 plus years of experience and uh, i see someone is you know not able to hear am i audible to everyone right uh, yes bala you are audible all right that's fine okay just don't mind all right so about myself i am balachandra and i do have a 10 plus years of experience working in an mnc company and i do have an experience on different technologies which includes cloud networking and uh, vmware and scripting and many more okay so out of these overall my experience i do find now as everyone is aware of and which vu people are in so cloud being an emerging technology and uh, currently i'm working as a tech lead in present company where i'm trying to support a team all right so let me share my screen so let me know if my screen is visible to everyone it is right all right okay so let's start with the session so so as per my info i just came to know that there are different participants from different domains or the freshers or who might have a little experience all right and they might have heard about the cloud computing so we'll start off with a basic understanding all right so we do have a total session duration that is for completely 30 hours and which is nothing but 15 days okay in these 15 days we will just try to have an agenda to cover the basics of the cloud environment and trying to understand and just go in a deep dive with at least one cloud technology and we will just try to overview an introduction on other cloud technologies as well like an like presently we are trying to concentrate on amazon web services okay and we will just try to have a intro on google cloud and microsoft azure as well okay and then we will just try to see 
how does the cloud computing works within in real time and the practical environment and how we are able to operate and access the cloud services within amazon web services so most of our practical sessions not only theoretical including the theoretical we will be trying to concentrate on the practical sessions within the amazon web services okay so that should be our agenda in this entire course duration so we will be discussing everything about uh, you know the career and the jobs and how in real time this cloud environment the positions it works how the exposure for freshers it's going to be take out all right so even everything about the certification as well we will be trying to review as well okay so we will just try to go with the theoretical understanding along with the ppt presentations and also with the practical lab sessions as well so if possible i'll just try to make you do lab sessions as well so if you have a free tier account we can try to do a practice as well from your end okay so let's understand and go through the session for now so cloud computing what is cloud computing you people might have heard about cloud right maybe in uh, you know in your in general maybe from your peers or in your studies or your semesters you might have a subject as well correct i hope for csc backgrounds and for electronics and communication background you might have a subject as well so it is mostly theoretical base you worked on so in general we will try to see how it works in the real time environment okay what is a cloud computing cloud computing is something which we are trying to access some informations over the internet okay so not physically but virtually what is the difference between physical and virtual we need to understand that physical is something where we can try to have access to that either the storage or the device or the network or any kind of an physical access servers right physical devices i can say for example your computer you have a physical computer or a physical laptop or a physical uh, you know hard disk i can say so those devices we are trying to access from your end so what if the access of the storage and the computers directly accessing over the cloud internet all right over the internet so that is something we are calling as cloud so cloud computing is defined as the services which we are accessing over the internet all right cloud computing is something we are accessing services over the internet okay for example why this cloud comes into a picture for example we might have a storage like a files documents videos and some kind of an additional data usually where do we try to store you know physical computers or your laptops or any devices that you would like to store for example hard disk correct so that's fine for a limited space or for a limited amount of time for example i can try to store my data for example so in some case where your data is out of the limit where you are not even able to store that in your personal computer so what do you do you simply try to have an additional hard disk or external hard disk correct you might have an idea on that so if the data space is full in your existing hard disk or the storage what you do you will try to prefer an external storage correct you will try to prefer an external storage maybe a physical hard disk you will try to have it attached and try to load your data and the save the data and we are not sure if the data is completely persistent it is available always until and unless the physical device is functional working functionally if it is working properly correct so what if if we keep on try to load the data every time in your physical hard disk or the physical computers so it's kind of a continuous tedious job that to upload correct so you have a lots of data where you can't even try to store the data in your physical devices you might have a doubt where do i have to store that your complete hard disk itself is running out of the hard drive space so what is an option anyone you know before i just want to confirm let us make session as interactive as well okay so if you try to speak maybe if you try to chat as well that's fine 
we can try to have that interaction and i can try to understand your questions we can try to make sure the subject is having a knowledge transfer to everyone all right so i'm getting a responses from the chat as well like a cloud storage network or the cloud or internet or the google drive for example we'll take an example okay for example you have a mobile where you might have a free space of 15 gb of a google drive space in your company mobiles right maybe android or if you have an iphones you might have a icloud correct once your drive is full maybe your local cabin storage usually the mobiles will get around 128 gb 256 gb correct if that is out of the space what is our option we will try to directly store the data over the cloud storage okay where are we trying to store over the cloud storage correct so what is a cloud storage here here this is where the cloud concept comes in for example as someone said it is something but gmail drive we are trying to store our photos images documents videos correct and maybe the iphone user they can try to store in the icloud correct and uh, if you want to have some kind of an additional drives maybe the cloud drive storage we have a different cloud storages as well where we can try to purchase we can try to store for example third party third party cloud storages correct it's nothing but a third party cloud storage so so this is the option where i'm trying to store that information or the data when i'm trying to run out i mean out of the space correct so basically what i'm trying to do rather using my physical devices to store the data i am trying to use the services over the cloud environment where these services are provided by them and i am trying to store the data so who are trying to provide this data for example here gmail okay who is trying to provide he is nothing but a google company correct google is a company where it is trying to provide the data for their customers because you need to have a gmail account correct of course there are different apps like a mega app terra app these are nothing but a additional cloud drives okay alibaba cloud there are different various third party vendors as well maybe for example this is an iphone vendor for example correct apple is trying to provide a free storage for example so third party cloud storages dropbox one drive one drive is for microsoft correct for example one drive is for microsoft company okay and uh, so these are the cloud vendors so we are simply trying to load our data into their storages and we are trying to store the data and trying to save the data bits because earlier days we might not have a that much option now it's been visible everywhere uh, maybe G google drive it is trying to provide around 15 gb of our space space correct and on top of that if i need to purchase the data i just have to pay additional amount to purchase the additional drive space for example if i need 100 gb of a space google will try to take the amount from us and then we can try to purchase the additional drive space and we can try to store the data now what actually happening here these companies they are trying to create a virtual drives what we are calling that as i am trying to call that as a virtual drives what we are trying to store at our end physical drives correct physical drives are nothing but what we try to store at our end like in the physical devices virtual drives are stored actually over the cloud environment so who are the providers who are trying to provide we are calling these companies as cloud vendors okay we are trying to call them as cloud vendors that means these cloud vendors like a google company apple microsoft amazon company they are trying to provide us services to store the data to use their services to use their applications everything okay so that means initially i'll get a 15 gb of a free drive space that's fine but additional space if i have to purchase what i have to do i need to pay money for example 100 gb of a space maybe i need to pay around 500 rupees per month all right maybe we have a quarterly plans we have a yearly plans correct that means these companies are providing services to us and we are trying to use over the internet that is nothing but a cloud services we are trying to use them okay 
we are trying to use them as a cloud services okay so basically going by the definition not only the storage we can try to use not only the storage but we can try to use the applications we can try to use the database we can try to use uh, iot's we can try to develop applications everything can be you know done over the cloud environment so cloud is everywhere okay so it's nothing but an on demand access that means whenever we had a requirement whenever we want to access the data via the internet we can simply trying to use the services from the cloud vendor so for example i am trying to use a gmail application okay so in gmail application what i am trying to do i am simply trying to store my documents i am sending an email applications i am trying to send out email receiving the responses i am trying to send the videos so that means it is nothing but a software correct who is a cloud vendor who is trying to provide us he is here agolin google is a cloud vendor who is trying to provide the services that means google not only trying to provide the storage services these are nothing but a storage services right we are we have seen the storage services here now here they are also trying to provide the software services so google is a cloud vendor they are trying to provide different services in the same way the other companies like an amazon microsoft azure and other cloud vendors they are trying to provide the services that means we are trying to pay the amount for the services that we try to use and utilize okay we are trying to use the services and pay for the services for the time for how much time we try to utilize that's how it works okay let's go with the definition and how it works okay let's see so going by the definition what is cloud computing cloud computing is nothing but the delivery of the compute services including servers storage database networking software analytics and intelligence tools over the internet what we are calling over the internet means the term we are calling that as the cloud environment so simply the cloud is nothing but accessing the services via the internet where we can try to access different resources like we can try to access applications where we have seen like in gmail applications microsoft outlook and whatever google drive and the google app engine okay and uh, everything like a data storage development tools network capabilities and everything virtually over the internet so who will try to manage all these services who will manage all these services like a virtual server storage database network software intelligence who are trying to provide them the cloud vendors so they are called as cloud service providers okay so these cloud service providers they will try to have these resources available for us in terms of a monthly subscriptions in terms of a yearly plans and they'll try to have your bills that you have to pay according to the usage that you are trying to utilize their services over the internet okay we have seen the storage and the softwares correct now servers what is a server anyone had an idea what is a server anyone I need a response maybe let's make it as interactive everyone what is server okay some participants are trying to respond so server is nothing but a for example virtual computer i can say what is a virtual computer and the computers which we try to have an access right we are calling as a physical computer at home right physical computer or physical devices so the same set of the access like everything you will try to access this same computer virtually over the online over the cloud environment it's nothing but a virtual computer so this virtual computer is nothing but a server even we can try to deploy server over the internet that means the cloud vendors the cloud service provider they are trying to offer virtual servers okay that's what they are trying to mention server is nothing but a virtual computer you can try to launch 
different servers like a windows server linux server macintosh okay so this is nothing but a hosted service that has been provided by the cloud vendor okay so we will try to see how these services can be accessed directly over the internet okay so how this cloud computing is going to help us so it is going to help us to reduce cost and efforts of purchasing the physical devices and installations of physical devices and the infrastructure and the configurations and managing and your own computer or data center setup so everything so ma mainly we are trying to call them as lowering the it cost it environment cost in that way how it is going to help us it is going to improve agility and time to value okay simply with the help of a cloud we can start using the applications or the servers and the storage and uh, everything within the minutes instead of waiting for the deployment like we don't need to purchase we don't need to set up everything can be configured directly over the cloud environment without consideration of having issues on configure and installation of a hardware and we don't need to worry about hardware we don't need to worry about installation of software all right so especially for developers as well they can try to simply develop applications over the cloud environment as well okay so server is simply nothing but a virtual computer hosted in the cloud environment that means cloud vendor they will try to provide us the services we can try to launch that server virtually over the internet we will try to see how it works so what is the concept of server how it is there how they are able to provide it virtually over the internet because of the concept of virtualization okay there is a concept of a virtualization where the cloud vendors they will try to follow this for example the cloud vendors they will try to have the virtualization concept which enables the cloud vendors to provide and make maximum use of their data center okay maximum use of their data center so that means physically they will have a data center and they are trying to have the setup of complete infrastructure including the servers including you know the physical computer physical devices and the networking devices and the wires and complete set of complete data center itself they will try to manage and they have a software called hypervisor so with the help of that software we have an access to that particular physical device virtually over the cloud internet okay so that's how it works so can anyone confirm what is a data center anyone what is data center for example if you see see this is how the physical data center looks like okay this is how the physical data center looks like what happens these cloud vendors they will try to have a data center deployed in some location okay so data center is nothing but a physical infrastructure okay so what all the information we have here so physical infrastructure means for example if you want to have a setup up at our home for example i need to set up a different computers and i need to have a router at my home and then i can try to use my computer and i have an internet connection i can try to operate correct now how this cloud vendor provides services to customers did you ever had a doubt on that any idea at our home itself we have a simple example 
how we are trying to establish we if we, i want to have a, some application developed at my home what is the basic need i need an internet connection i need a router i need a good internet uh, physical computer with a good specifications correct maybe if i want to have an additional monitors i have an additional monitors if i want to have an additional storage i need to purchase some hard disk correct and uh, in that way i'll try to have that internet setup i'll try to deploy application for example that is nothing but a physical infrastructure at my own data center it's nothing but a my own data center correct it's nothing but a simple for example so how companies like a google microsoft and uh, amazon for example these big companies how they are trying to provide virtual services it's because they do manage the data center okay they do manage the data centers so you know the data center looks like this the one you are trying to see in the pictures so what actually happens these data centers have you can see the different sets right you can see this it's kind of a rectangular boxes which have a physical servers over there correct we are calling this as a servers okay and and the servers which are placed in these kind of a rectangular boxes right we are calling this as a racks racks means inside these racks these servers will be placed with like a high end configurations okay so what all the devices which will be having inside these data centers like a servers network devices security devices correct maybe these kind of a information like kind of a basic needs what they need to have it so what actually they, these companies do to have these data centers deployed that means these are the big companies you people already trying to use the gmail application google drive applications amazon is, amazon is trying to provide you know the amazon website applications and prime video different kind of a streaming correct so when they are trying to provide these services how are you trying to access their services because they need to have a infrastructure then only you will be able to connect to their cloud environment and utilize the services correct how it is possible because they will try to manage their data center that is nothing but a inf physical on premise data center on premise data center that means on premise means the data center which these cloud vendors manage maintain configure install everything they try to manage and they are the responsible you know they are the one who are responsible for this complete infrastructure setup okay so usually what is needed to deploy a data center usually okay we need a space so what these people this cloud vendor is trying to do they need to have a space that means they will trying to purchase an acres of land somewhere outside of you know from your location where it has a visibility and then they might have to purchase or they have to lease okay so also they have a purchase a space for example they had a lease on that agreement and they need an electricity or all right and uh, like a power correct these are the basic requirements to have a data center for example and to maintain this particular data center you need a man space correct and we need a network connectivity what is network connectivity to operator devices what is needed and what is network connectivity you people have heard about routers routers switches firewalls access points wifi correct these are nothing but a network devices that has to be there correct to operate this data center as well what else needed mm, physical data center security even security is also important correct and then what else so if you remember we also need uh, air cooling ac
ceiling and underground okay we can call that as why this is needed for example in these data centers there had a lot many servers right you can see this so what happens when these servers are operated okay what happens these servers are operated these servers keep on trying to utilize the resources when you trying to have that utilization the utilization is very high like a cpu memory is very high then these servers get heated up these physical servers get heated up at that time to cool down those servers we need an, to have that maintain a temperature like a cooling temperature so that's why these data center have an electricity top ceiling and underground ceiling as well so everything will be in the cooling environment so even when you try to have a got a chance when you might have an idea these data centers will be inside that will be having a cooling temperature so at the threshold temperature it has to be maintained otherwise these servers get heated up and there are chances of getting servers shut down or having any issues like a stopped so that's why they'll try to have a minimal temperature so for maintaining all these issues we need also a manpower that is the main concern which has to be maintained okay manpower is needed as well so these are the basic requirements of a data center to be deployed as well correct so once this data center is deployed now these are the physical servers right now how can these cloud vendors are trying to provide services from these physical data center to customers with the help of some kind of a virtualization softwares as i told you virtualization and hypervisor this is kind of a technology what they'll try to do they are trying to install that software into these servers and then virtually they are trying to provide remote access to the users so that you can trying to access these services over the console either through the web console as well so whatever the google drive storage you are trying to use the icloud storage you do you are trying to use those you are trying to access virtually but in the background your data is trying to store securely over the physical data center are you people getting my point so virtually i am trying to get access to these services from the cloud vendor because cloud vendor is the one who is responsible for this on premise data center the data center is operated from the different locations over the globe across different countries from there we are trying to get the services and trying to access those services virtually over the internet that means remote access okay that's how it works now do you think for a small companies or you know medium companies or for the customers of the clients is it possible to have deployment of their own on premise data center so it might be a tedious job like a configuration purchase the cost installations everything like a manpower i need to pay salaries as well so that is kind of a very complex job that's why nowadays small companies to medium and large level organizations everyone are trying to migrate their infrastructure they are trying to completely depend on the cloud environment so that's why these cloud models are becoming popular this cloud vendors are trying to provide services across the world that's why we are here to discuss on the cloud computing as well that's why it is famous as well now okay so this is how the data center it works on any uh, doubts on understanding this and also we have end of life for these devices that means all the devices like all the servers what we are trying to have inside this data center correct so these servers might have an expiry date correct at some point these servers has to be replaced so that's why we are calling end of life eol okay we have to replace the devices okay so all these complexities everything will be taken care by the cloud vendors like a google microsoft amazon they try to invest so much of a cost and they try to manage their data center and from there they are trying to provide the virtual access and the services to the customers and the companies and the enterprise organizations across different parts of the world and to the users as well that is how it works okay so this is how the data center works this is the overview on data center okay just want to give an overview how it works so you have to know understand the basic understanding of how we are trying to access remotely the virtual services then only you will be able to understand the cloud computing and further services okay so as we have seen the cloud computing it is nothing but storing data or applications on remote servers or processing the data or applications from the servers like in the cloud 
accessing the data or applications via the internet. So you can see here we can try to access the data. You just need to simply have an internet connection. You can try to access anywhere across the world to connect any applications or the servers or the services or the cloud environment through a browser or through the software or any devices. Okay. So simply, for example, as we have seen, this is the setup, how it has to manage the on-premise data center. That means if you want to have a own infrastructure, you need to spend time, money, manpower, everything to deploy the own data center. For example, we can see this example as per the snippet. There is a small company, okay, where you want to host a website. Okay, you need to have these kind of a minimum things. What you do, if you want to develop a website, how you want to do that? You need to purchase a servers, for example, physical servers, correct? Once you purchase a physical server, what we have to do? I need to maintain and servers like installation configurations. For that, what we need? We need a skilled individual like a manpower who has to in install that complete environment, correct? Now, once we try to install that, what happens? These manpower, we need a internet connection. We need a separate data center room. We are trying to install everything which is done. For example, I try to purchase around 50 servers. Okay. I'm trying to talk about physical servers. Okay. I have a network devices, small data center room and electro AC and the manpower. So these are the basic things what I have done. Okay. To purchase a physical servers, what all the things I need? I need to raise a quotation. Usually when in the companies, it has to go in this way. Quotation means the purchase order. We are calling that as a PO. PO means purchase order. That means the requirement of amount. And we need to get an approval from management. And once we get an approval, we will try to order the devices. Once we try to order the devices, it has to ship from different locations. Usually the servers, usually it has to be shipped from other countries. It takes minimum of one month to deliver. Once it is received, what it has to be done, the IT team will install the servers. Install, configure, deploy, maintain. So this is how the process usually happens, correct? This is how the process usually happens. So. This is the job where he has to do and and as I told you this is all the things the minimum basic requirements to have a physical data center. That's fine. I don't want to go through the cloud. So I want to have the deployment. It's okay. I'm agreeing that. Okay. So next what happens my website is ready. I have a developers who try to deploy that. Okay. Now what happens I have a 50 servers, right? My servers are capable of handling how many servers for example thousand customers thousand users they are able to use my website over the internet okay because my 50 servers are capable to handle only thousand users for example what website i try to deploy for example www.flipkart.com okay my website is deployed now this has a capacity of handling how many users thousand users so I try to deploy that's fine. Now once my website is ready, I'm trying to give this website to the users or the customers. Now when the customers are trying to access they can use. So my demand the popularity of this website becomes visibility to everyone. So the capacity it got increased from 1000 to 1200. Again, the capacity it got increased to again popular to 15. 1500 users. So what happens when the capacity is more the traffic is high on the website. Correct high traffic. What happens when there is a high traffic you remember during the earlier days, maybe three, four years back. If I could remember when you are trying to access the website or book some mobiles, your website is slow. Your website doesn't respond. Even if you try to click on any option, it just crash. Why the reason because as for the capacity, you know when this happens usually in during the big billion days correct or festival seasons 
we have a huge demand on the websites correct your websites are slow anyone anyone had this situation before when you try to book something as well when you try to pay amount it just trucks and your amount has to be refunded so why did it happens because the capacity of this website to handle thousand users because i purchased only 50 servers because i am trying to take a physical infrastructure not the cloud infrastructure that is a problem here if i have a capacity thousand obviously when new users are trying to hit the capacity and the load will be more on the load will be more on 50 servers so when the load is more i need what i have to do i need additional servers you are getting my point i need additional servers so when i need additional servers what actually happens again i need to do my website is more right if i have to do additional servers then what i'll do again i have to purchase the servers again i have to process all this like i need to get an approval i need to have a purchase order i need to get an approval from the management it has to be ordered it has to be installed again the person has to see configure and everything so these kind of a things it is repeatable so every time you do every time you have to purchase and additional servers and you have to do that this is the problems with the physical infrastructure like a physical data center correct these are the disadvantages what we are trying to see here when we are trying to have the physical environment for example what are the disadvantages we see here if you consider the cost see every time you have to purchase the servers that means that involves the cost now for example the same situation if i try to have a different scenario okay i have a 50 servers i have a capacity to use them thousand customers correct now at some point your website is not popular so the usage is only 400 customers every time because your website is not actually do going down you are into a loss for example so what actually happen the company they cannot try to remove these physical servers because they already spend the time the money and the manpower on that correct they already purchase more they purchase you know spend more cost on that so they cannot revert back correct it's kind of a loss for them right so they might have a thousand servers if the thousand servers if there's a situation where they are not using still the manage have to have a manpower as well they need to have a i mean power electricity networking and the manpower even for the unused servers we have to monitor even for the new server also we need to do that so everything it depends on the cost even the customer as a front end users even the small companies as well everyone is con con you know concerned about the cost but when the same infrastructure when it moves to the cloud environment the story is different okay that's the difference over here okay so what are the differences what are the disadvantages we see in the physical environment here let's try to understand if you consider the cost the setup is expensive troubleshooting problems can be very much tedious as it may conflict with the business goals whenever there is an issue on any particular server it takes very much you know long time because this person has to be responsible they need to troubleshoot in which server there is an issue troubleshooting issues also very a tedious job correct since the traffic is varying your servers will be ideal most of the time as i told you the example there are only 400 customers are using that means only 25 servers are being used the remaining 25 servers are ideal the remaining 25 servers are ideal and still the complete manpower has to be completely still has to be monitor those servers as well that's a problematic situation of the physical environment but when it moves to the cloud computing okay when it has to move to the cloud computing what happened I can try to save the cost. How? Pay only for what you use. So, how many servers you use? You only pay for that amount of time. You are not paying for the virtual server. You are paying for only the time. For the time, how much time you are trying to launch the server, only for that you need to pay. For example, as we have taken the example of a thousand servers, okay? Suddenly, there is an increase in the demand. My sir, we know the usage of the customers are increased from 1000 to 1200. So, I need additional. How many servers? For example, here I had a 50 servers, right? 50 virtual computers. So, to 200 means I want to have additional 10 servers. Then, what happened? Within 
seconds or minutes cloud will launch servers automatically with the same software with the same application deploy servers automatically with the help of a scaling concept we are calling as a scale in with the help of a scale in concept we have a concept in the amazon cloud environment we are calling as a auto scaling it's a scale in scale in means we are trying to increase additional 10 servers for example my servers 1000 right it is now 1200 so what happened my usage of the traffic is low for example my flipkart website is not popular and i am trying to expect a decreased traffic like so many less member of people are using that particular website so around 400 users average so in that case what i'll try to do i need to decrease the server correct here i am trying to increase the servers additional it will be done within seconds or minutes here also i am trying to decrease the servers this is nothing but a scale out okay scale out means i am trying to decrease the servers from 50 to 25 simple in this way i am trying to save the money you are getting my point it's because of cloud am i making you sense so this kind of an automatic scaling concepts are actually applicable in the cloud cloud environment not only the cost but this will try to help you in terms of a deployment and scaling the infrastructure as well am i clear with the topic how this is going to be benefit in real time compared to the physical data center over the virtual cloud environment any doubts am i confusing or am i fast just let me know if it is clear that's fine so this kind of a process it will be done over the cloud console okay i'll show you how it can be done we are trying to do all this configuration where we can try to do over the cloud console the cloud vendors are trying to provide us the access to the cloud console we will try to configure we being a cloud engineers like for example i am working as a cloud engineer or the cloud architect i am trying to deploy this configuration to have this scale in and scale out concepts and to launch a virtual servers and to use the storage services everything i can try to do over the cloud console who will provide this cloud console access the cloud vendors who is cloud vendors google amazon microsoft okay that is how it's going to work out clear so this is about in the real time environment how it is going to work out okay what are the different types of cloud types okay we'll try to understand that so we have a private cloud public cloud and the hybrid cloud am i audible to everyone is it not clear someone is telling it's not clearly audible i am audible to everyone right is it clear my voice is clear okay i think sharwani you have to see your you know internet or your microphone so everyone can confirm that i'm audible to them properly so we have a different types of a cloud which we have to learn and understand as well what is that private cloud public cloud and the hybrid cloud private cloud is nothing but computing services offered over a private it network by a single organization that means the companies they have a their own infrastructure they have a dedicated infrastructure like a single organization they have own private infrastructure itself completely because they do have an access they don't provide services to everyone anyone over the internet it is completely restricted that means it is self service okay and with additional control and security and the customization they doesn't provide access to anyone across the world because they come they do, their own companies will have access to their data that means it is just to make sure to ensure that organization sense to data is not accessible to the third party providers or the customers or the clients okay for example i have a company i have you know i'm running a, a finance company or lic company i don't want to share or give access to anyone over you know over the internet that means i don't want to utilize any servers or 
services over the internet that means what i'll try to do i'll oh, i'll deploy my own infrastructure my own physical setup i'll try to have a my own servers network devices everything i'll try to do myself i don't want to depend anyone across the cloud internet so the companies they'll try to prefer, prefer these kind of a private cloud setup what is public cloud public cloud is something the cloud services offered over the internet for example gmail application google drive correct and amazon microsoft these are the one who are trying to provide the services to the customers right so that we are calling as a public cloud so computing services offered by the third party providers over the internet not like a private cloud which is not secure i mean not completely restricted they want to provide the services on the public cloud over the internet and which are available to anyone who want to purchase and use okay that's nothing but a pay as you go like on demand services so based on that you will try to pay right so that is nothing but a public cloud for example i am trying to use a gmail application which is nothing but a public cloud because google is a company who are trying to provide the service to me i am trying to purchase i want to use that i have a gmail account i can send out an email applications and use an applications i have want to use a google drive application everything correct because this is nothing but a public cloud example all right and uh, what is private public i mean hybrid cloud hybrid cloud is nothing but a combinations of private and public okay so that means it could be hosted at the private cloud location or at the cloud provider's data center that means in the hybrid cloud concept what happens the critical applications or the servers they don't try to provide access to the customers or the users over the internet but again there are some applications of the servers they want to provide access over the internet so that means combinations of private and public is nothing but a hybrid cloud okay so that means generally hybrid cloud customers host their critical applications on their own private servers for more security and the control and store and provide access to the secondary applications to the internet at the cloud providers locations that's how we are trying to see that am i clear so for example we see a hybrid cloud example you see uh, there is an banking application okay so what happens for example there is a new bank application they want to provide the services to the users what kind of a services for example downloading the checkbooks and updating their information the personal data and the emails correct but there is some secure information they don't want to share definitely you know the data is important right what they do they will try to completely restrict the access of the data of the banking they don't try to share any personal information or the back end sensitive data then they'll try to prefer the back end private data centers correct private servers so they provide some access to the over the websites that is because of the public service and they'll try to restrict the access to the sensitive data at the back end with the help of a private server correct like a sensitive data you are getting my point because they want to have a business critical applications right they want to have their own servers for more security and the control that is nothing but a private so that is a good example all right so in this way we need to have understanding on these kind of a cloud models where based on the requirement where companies how they try to choose they'll try to choose their understanding for example if i have a company i have a very sensitive data for example li i mean uh, sensitive data like a financial documents hospital information okay they want to have a deploy their own data center their own infrastructure their own servers then i'll try to go with a private cloud environment for example i am a generic user i have a requirement i have a small company i want to deploy a website i don't want to spend money time configuration everything then i'll try to use the services of the public cloud because there are good trustworthy companies like a google microsoft amazon they are trying to provide services to me then i am trying to utilize the services over the cloud internet we are trying to use that as a public cloud so the public cloud vendors are nothing but a google microsoft oracle and uh, amazon okay hybrid is nothing but a combination okay any doubts on this any doubts
Yes, actually cloud community cloud is also one kind of a concept. It's kind of a shared environment. Okay. We have a community cloud as well. That's a different concept. So community cloud is something it's kind of a in bridge like uh, over the internet or the VPN like it's shared cost amount amongst the different vendors. Okay. Public cloud is completely responsible for the cloud vendors. Community cloud is it's kind of a permanent shared cost among the different members. That's a you know different information compared to the public and private and the community cloud. Any other concern, any doubts? Any doubts? So someone is telling the example for hybrid cloud. See, for example, you had a company where you want to uh, host a website. Okay. For example, it's a physical, I mean, normal website itself. What happens? That website is trying to store the information about the insurance policies. Okay. So what you do, you're trying to provide the access of this website to the users over the internet correct that means you are trying to enter the information you are trying to have information about your pan number other number and everything and your personal details correct now where you want to store the data i am running a company i don't want to spend much about into the infrastructure completely into the manpower infrastructure and the cost so what i'll try to do i'll have a simple setup like you know small data center what i'll try to do i'll try to maintain the database servers for that, I need a minimum setup of a small data center room with a small manpower. What I'll try to do, whatever the data I'm trying to receive from the customers, I'll try to store inside the database servers, which I'll try to manage. I don't give access to anyone. So whatever the deployment of the website, for example, I have a requirement of a website to further thousand users. As we have seen, I need a 50 servers. So I don't need to pay the amount for those 50 servers. I don't need to pay the amount for those 50 servers. Simply what I'll try to do, I'll just throw to the Amazon. I'll say, I don't want to have that much of a budget. I need 50 servers in your public cloud environment. So I'll try to pay the amount for how much time I'm trying to use. I don't want to set up, configure, install and spend money on that. So for the web servers, I'll try to use the Amazon as a cloud service vendor and I'll install applications. I'll try to deploy my website over there public cloud that means here i am trying to use the private cloud concept also i am trying to use a public cloud concept am i clear someone had a question on that i think admin admin correct so for example private cloud private cloud vendors we have so many examples like a hp company and cisco company and dell company these are the companies they don't want to rely on public cloud vendors that means hp company they work on developing physical devices that means they don't want to depend on the cloud vendors like an amazon and these companies because they have a reputation they have a compliance policies they have own data center they have a own data center they want to have a private cloud environments 
and even the dell company they try to have a manufacturing of the laptops right they don't want to reveal the sensitive data or information maybe they are very much having a good budget to deploy their own private infrastructure setup so they will manage it's nothing but a private cloud so these kind of an examples we can see public cloud obviously it's nothing but an amazon google cloud oracle whatever you know the public cloud vendors who are trying to serve the information or the services to the users yes of course public cloud has a security it's not simple that it is going to be have issues in terms of a security because they have a very much strict protocols algorithms and security rules and the configuration mechanism until you try to reveal and trying to give access to someone the public clouds are trying to promise you at least 99% of security level as well okay so everywhere the cloud is okay so this is about the types of clouds see the public cloud we have an example of aws microsoft google these are the examples private cloud is nothing but a vmware dell oracle cisco these are the companies hybrid cloud is nothing but a combination again hp they will try to have a private servers and the public servers or the public vendors aws these are kind of an examples we can see here okay we will try to discuss on the cloud services we have a different cloud services what are the services platform as a service software as a service and infrastructure as a service okay what is software as a service anyone simple example we try to use google drive or gmail are these software as a service because the google vendors are trying to provide these softwares as a service to the customers that's what they are trying to give us the services to the users so software service are nothing but a which allows users to access third parties cloud vendor software or the services over the cloud in terms of a purchase model in this model we don't need to install or download applications on their local devices instead the applications are located on the cloud physical data center and their network and we can directly access through a web or remotely access or the applications or the mobiles of the different devices that is simply nothing but a software as a service okay and platform as a service what is platform as a service that means it is kind of a cloud computing that provides development and deployment platform or the environment to the developers that means users who want to develop and run applications without worrying on the infrastructure or without worrying on the setup and the configuration of the cost everything will be provided by the cloud environment that means only the platform is provided we can try to like means developers can try to develop the applications over the cloud environment that is nothing but a platform as a service so different tools are provided by the cloud environment we can use that our tools and we can try to use them that means the cloud is trying to provide those services to us for example you have a google app engine so what is the purpose of google app engine this is kind of a tool for the developers we can try to write a code in any language and we can try to use it and in aws also we have a tools like a elastic bean stack simply we have a code like a .net python c++ java right these kind of a different codes we can try to deploy how we can try to deploy because we don't we need a complete computer with a good high end configuration we need a platform so that kind of a platform where cloud is trying to provide so that is why we are calling as a platform as a servers it provides users to develop cloud based applications that means users purchase the resources from the vendor the cloud vendors and we can try to go on a pay as you go basis and can access them over a internet that means we don't need to worry about underlying infrastructure that means servers operating system storage okay but it gives the control over the deployed applications in this way it allows the clients or the organizations to focus on the deployment and manage the applications okay by holding the responsibility of software maintenance plannings and resource procurement so saas is nothing but a software as a service pass is nothing but a platform as a service what is ias ias is nothing but a infrastructure as a service 
it is kind of a type of a cloud computing in which service provider is responsible for providing servers storage networking over a virtual interface okay that means the user don't need to manage the cloud infrastructure but the user can access have an access to the storage operating system and deploy applications here in saas and pass we don't have an access to the storage operating system deploy application right but in ias we have an access that means we can try to control how much cpu i need how much storage i need how much ram i need and how much you know uh i can say the utilization how much i can try to what kind of a server i need everything i can try to control because the cloud is trying to provide you infrastructure complete infrastructure as a service to the users okay if you try to see in depth you can see these differences over here this is saas this is pass this is ias in the saas you can see we have an access to the applications we have an access to the runtime middle way i mean we don't have an access to all these modules everything will be managed with the cloud if you are trying to use a google or the gmail application what you do we have an access to the you know application or the data that's it correct that's why we are trying to call that as a software as a service model that means the back end physical infrastructure like a networking storage servers virtualization operating system everything we are not concerned everything will be managed by the cloud we only have access to the data that's it when you come to the pass you will get a platform to install to manage to deploy that means you have an access to the applications and the data to the customer or the clients that means developers can try to utilize this kind of a platform as a servers okay that means the runtime the middleware operating system virtualization server storage networking all the physical setup infrastructure setup everything will be managed by the cloud vendor here okay so if you want to have a prepare linux server for data engineering team then you have to utilize the infrastructure as a service that means in infrastructure as a service what actually happens you have an access to choose what kind of a server i need linux server windows server how much cpu i need how much ram i need how much storage i need what is an operating system what kind of an application i need to install what kind of an architecture like a 32 bit or 64 bit so this kind of a visibility i have access to here over the virtual cloud console but on the back end the physical infrastructure like a virtualization concept like the physical data center the storage and the networking everything will be managed by the cloud vendor that's why we are calling infrastructure as a service that means the cloud vendor is trying to provide infrastructure as a service to here for us for the customer that means you can try to deploy your own server your own configuration over the cloud environment we need to understand these kind of a services because these are very important as well am i clear to everyone okay we have seen the cloud deployment models and the cloud types and the service model and what is cloud computing as well okay this is about wallet bot what are the characteristics of cloud computing if you see self service infrastructure that means we have an access to the cloud console we can try to deploy manage our own services whatever the requirement like a storage services networking services computing services okay database services we can try to self infrastructure with the help of a cloud console every google every cloud vendor will try to provide you a website access with a graphical user interface you can log in and trying to manage your own infrastructure to manage the infrastructure you need a knowledge on how to operate that so that's what we are trying to learn over this cloud course okay the basic understanding on operating true elastic capacity we can try to have the resource increase and we can try to manage the scalability how much servers how many servers i need how much time i have to launch everything i can try to manage and the capacities you know elastically capacity that whenever i need i can try to increase the resources as well by improving the business agility agility so it maintains running the business operations without affecting any issues to the customers by guaranteeing the availability and the durability to the customers and the com companies as well okay 
that's how the characteristics you can see benefits of the cloud computing it is highly scalable and uh, scalable means we can try to increase right we can try to increase servers we can try to increase resources whenever i need within a quick time more flexible as we have seen we have an options to perform over the graphical user interface of the cloud console reduce infrastructure cost as we have seen we have tried to see the cost setup like a pay as you go service okay so whatever the time you are trying to utilize we have to pay for that right in terms of a reduce in cost infrastructure cost like an automation of scale in and scale out concepts which is of high security concept we are trying to provide the services over internet backup and disaster recovery for example if you have a issues with one server in particular location we shouldn't be worry about that because your data is backup into other backup locations and the servers as well your data can be quickly replicated and backup and available over the other regions as well that's how it is very much helpful okay so even when it comes to the scalability whenever you make a capacity decision prior to deploy an application you often end up either you know having a big amount of infrastructure cost like we have a limited capacity right with the cloud computer these problems will go away because we can try to scale in the infrastructure and the scale out infrastructure you can have an access as much as of a little capacity and also and scale up and down as required with only a few minutes okay we can try to deploy the infrastructure that's how it is going to be available even the backup is very quick as per the backup options that is providable that means we have a different locations different data centers available in the background where amazon is trying to take care like an aw i mean google is trying to take care microsoft azure is trying to take care no issues with the location constraints so it does have a different locations the data centers are available across different locations across the globe so you can try to access the services from a different locations across the internet okay in this way we have a different benefits over the cloud environment so that means this aws or the google or the azure these companies they are spread across different countries in the world so that it is spread over different regions like a different locations and the zones so that it can offer good feasibility for the companies and the users okay so that they don't have any issues in the future all right so someone had a question that to manage the physical cores of the cpu on the cloud we cannot manage the physical code but whatever the virtual server you launch over the cloud environment you can try to control the access of the core cpu memory storage everything you can try to manage the physical data center access will be completely into the amazon cloud environment okay but you have a virtual server access right you can try to control the resource modification so this is kind of a disadvantages of the cloud computing which we can try to overcome as well like limited controls like we doesn't have an all access to control your physical data center right we have a limited controls over the virtual cloud environment there might be technical outages that can be recovered based on the backup and disaster disaster recovery plans as well there might be security issues because we can't guarantee on how you try to put your secure data from your end but aws is trying to have good amount of considerations or trying to give you a confirmation that the your data is secure on the cloud that it depends on how you would try to secure based on the encryption methods and how you trying to manage your credentials and access and to provide access to whom so based on our interventions our activities as well our security is important we need to maintain that as well so these things can be avoided how effective you are trying to manage your infrastructure as well okay these are basic you know disadvantages we can see so if you see the differences between on premise and the cloud what is on premise the physical data center cloud based means cloud data center so the companies who will try to prefer on premise these are the features the company who prefer to cloud environment these are the features you can see the security it is organization responsibility but the cloud everything will be responsible by the cloud environment customization it is difficult over the on premise because physical data center is complex but in the cloud it is simple 
in the updates wise the organization has a choice to choose updates but the cloud everything will be managed with the cloud itself ownership everything on premise here only data ownership we have an access to the customers but the back end will be managed with the cloud auditing and the troubleshooting it is difficult in the private you know on premise infrastructure the physical but it is very simple in the cloud because they are trying to provide different tools to audit and manage the logs and everything connectivity it might be a difficult after working hours based on the bandwidth and the network and how their information is you know audit is something which is you want to troubleshoot for example what server having issues like what kind of an utilization it is having correct where in the on premise you have to check for each server you have to log into that server and trying to check for the logs but in the cloud technology the auditing is very simple why because we have a tools to automatically monitor the logs and trying to gauge the capacity and utilization everything okay and who can afford this kind of an on premise environment only the big size organizations but cloud environment any small level to big level organizations it can be affordable because they are trying to provide different service and the cost effective models okay this is kind of a comparison so this is kind of a generic understanding of a cloud computing all right the differences between the physical data center and the virtual data center which are managed by the cloud environment okay so we are trying to learn about one of the cloud vendor like in depth like understanding on the interface how it going to be operated what kind of a services which are provided that is nothing but an aws okay amazon web services so why aws because AWS is a world's most comprehensive and broadly adapted cloud platform offering different 200 fully featured services from a data centers globally. So millions of customers, including the fast growing startup companies, larger enterprises and leading government agencies are using AWS cloud vendor and the services to lower cost, becoming more agile and innovate faster. Okay. So we have a different cloud vendors as well, but we are trying to concentrate on AWS because AWS being a popular model in current market. Okay. Why AWS means in, you know, before 2006, okay. No company took risk on trying to, you know, deploy their cloud environment or infrastructure into the market. But AWS took risk occupied almost 40% of the market. Okay. So they try to be emerging and trying to provide a vast number of services as well and become famous as well currently. All right, so that's why it's becoming one of the popular model and currently and uh, so like Amazon services owns and maintains their data center into a different locations across the world. Okay, and trying to provide the services across to the users. All right, so we are trying to learn about those services itself. You can see AWS is everywhere. You can see this across different parts across the globe. You can see these are nothing but a locations where these data centers got deployed. You can see my screen, right? So a region is nothing but a specific geographical, geographical location where these resources has been deployed, like a data center has been deployed. So this region is subdivided into several zone. Okay, zone means this region have a separate zones. That means, for example, US Central 1A, US Central 1B, US 1 Central 1B, like kind of a different data centers. Region is nothing but a location. Zone is nothing but a different zones or data centers which which have been deployed okay in the specific location that particular resources can be utilized these are amazon data centers you can see and in recently as well it has been hyderabad data center has been deployed right i hope you people have been remembered even we have a data center in mumbai as well so these amazon being operated across different parts across the globe like in everywhere mostly it is trying to deploy more and more data centers in the futures and providing the services to that particular 
country location users and the customers and the companies you can see in hyderabad mumbai these are the locations which are in india okay so why aws is popular because of its diversity stability and innovation in their services and why it is popular because of the availability of these services across different locations in the into the globe correct across different parts of the globe and we can try to migrate the data because of the migration services this aws is popular we can try to migrate our on premise physical environment data infrastructure data over the cloud environment because of the services that is provided by aws that is possible multi region backups for example you have a data or the infrastructure in one location for example hyderabad location i want to have a backup to the other location simply the backup is possible you can try to transfer and completely have that backup into the other region as well and it is popular because of scalability factor as i told you the scale in and scale out concepts right you can try to expand your resources and utilization and trying to scale the infrastructure and again the main thing is a pricing the pay as you go model you will try to pay only for the amount and the resources that you try to utilize for that only you will try to pay the amount you are not trying to pay for the physical devices or the physical infrastructure that is managed by the cloud environment okay so we are trying to go through further in the coming classes and learn understanding on the different services that being utilized in amazon as well okay so that's it for demo session today and the introduction of the cloud computing okay any doubts if you can try to ask i hope everyone got an understanding on the overview on the introduction of the cloud computing and we will try to learn some more interesting and uh, automatic deployments and the practical lab sessions coming days okay i'll just try to explain as much as clear and uh, so that you will be able to understand more it is not required for you to prepare because we need to understand what are the services which are actually in within the aws we will try to practice them like how to launch a virtual server how to use a virtual storage how to use a virtual networking service how to deploy a virtual database and for example if i want to deploy a website i can try to deploy a website in the cloud console everything these kind of interesting sessions we'll try to learn in the coming classes so it's going to be interesting and very much useful within this time constraint like within these 15 days i'll try to have as much of knowledge to you guys that should be helpful okay so to understand have this you know in depth analysis of this cloud computing you should have a basic computer skills understanding of what is computer okay the basic it knowledge that you should have a knowledge on that any doubts yes we will have an hands on session and uh, for that we need a aws free tier account that i'll just try to tell you tomorrow okay so i'll make you log into the cloud console as well so just try to follow the important practical points that i'll try to tell you okay so aws is trying to provide a uh, 12 months free tier access to the cloud console for the aws so where we can try to log in and try to practice as well okay
I hope everyone are clear with the basic understanding because I just don't want to go very quick. I just want to make you understand with the basic understanding how the cloud works. So once you fill the attendance, you can leave the meeting. Please provide your feedback as well in the attendance session. Thank you everyone. Have a great day. We'll catch up tomorrow. Yes, you can see the class on YouTube as well. And yes, the PPTs will be available soon. Yes, the feedback form is also the attendance. Yes, once you have an attendance, you can have the feedback. I think uh, admin team XLR if uh, someone have an uh, fee, I mean attendance sheet they just need it seems you can send that in yeah, the chat. yeah okay I already shared the attendance link uh, in the zoom and YouTube as well I'm sharing it once again or uh, please don't yeah. forget to mark your attendance yes So the feedback form is available in the Zoom, also in the YouTube description, it seems, as per admin team. Guys, if you have query or question for me as well, what is regarding to the RMS registration or anything else, please let me know. Okay, I think there is no any other question. So we'll wind up for the day and uh, we'll meet you on tomorrow at the same time. So thank you so much for joining and we'll see you on tomorrow.